Hi, everyone. Welcome to a special takeover edition of the Inner Loop Radio. My name is Zhang Yun, and I'll be your host today, and I'm here to talk about inspiration. Something that has been inspiring me a lot lately, and perhaps maybe even intimidating me just a little bit, are the walls of our new house, which I'm sitting in right now. Shortly after we closed, one of the first things we did was to have the entire interior painted this very pure, stark white. And we still haven't hung anything up yet. So the whole place looks like this very fresh white canvas. And what I find inspiring about the walls is that they're all possibility and creativity and potential right now. We can do anything. And I haven't messed things up yet. I haven't pounded a nail in three inches too high or crowded too many things on to the same wall or scratched the trim, trying to move a bookcase. These are all things that I've done in the past and things that I am sure that I will do in the very, very near future. But for right now, the walls are a blank slate which got me thinking about how funny blank slates are both in writing and in life. There is a reason why people who want to lose weight often start their diets on Mondays, the beginning of the week, or why people start their resolutions at the beginning of every new year, um, because blank slates are full of possibility. Um, but stories don't often come to us in this linear sort of way where we imagine them from their natural beginning and simply build on. More often than not, uh, we see and discover our stories out of order. I know that's particularly true for me. For example, with my first novel, Shelter, that entire novel began with this little fragment of an image. I imagined a Korean American man standing at his kitchen sink washing dishes and looking out his window and seeing his elderly mother walking toward his house naked. And for me, the, the joy and also the challenge of writing is trying to figure out what happened to get us to this particular scene, and then also to figure out what happened afterwards. So today's prompt is called The Heart of the Matter, and it's meant to sort of honor these fragments and to build energy out of them rather than taking energy away by trying to sort of scaffold and figure out how do we get to this point. I want you to think about an image or a scene or a snippet of dialogue, something that you've been kicking around in your head for a while that you've wanted to turn into a story, but you just don't know how to begin. And instead of taking away the energy and the heat and maybe even the joy out of this fragment by trying to figure out how to get there, just write straight into it, straight into the heart of the matter. Never mind that you don't know how it starts or how it ends. Never mind that the language might begin with something kind of clumsy like so or suddenly or just drop in. And definitely never mind that you haven't scaffolded what the story needs to get there. Just put your pen down for 10 minutes or however many minutes you have right now and write. This is what I ended up coming up with uh, in response to this writing prompt. And just a heads up the main character, his name is Piotr, which is spelled P I O. T-R. Uh, it's a variant of the name Peter. And I just imagined this fragment in which an elderly security guard, um, Piotr, sort of loses it at this also elderly Asian couple who has been sitting in his lobby all day. Um, I figured that they were trying to conduct some business in person rather than doing it online or on the phone, but he can't get anyone to help them. So Piotr has had enough. You have to leave now, he says. The couple look at each other, then back at him, their expressions betraying nothing. Out, he says, his voice echoing against the cold marble pile. I've called everyone I can. No one here can help you. Don't you understand? You have to leave. We drove very far, the woman begins, but her husband mutters something in their language, something low under his breath, quieting her. Piotr waits for him to offer his own explanation or defense, but he says nothing, which angers Piotr even more, how the man still won't stand up for himself. You've taken up too much of my time already. You have to leave. The clock above their heads now reads 3.20. They've been sitting in his lobby for nearly six hours. How much more punishment can they take? Why won't you go, Piotr shouts. Do I need to call the police? He has never, not in 15 years of working for this building, had to call the police on anyone. He's never even threatened it. The fact that he's threatening to do it now to this elderly couple lights him up with shame. 
So a couple observations um, about this little draft. It definitely escalates fast, too fast in, in my mind, even for a short story. And uh, I apparently love to use the word something and nothing a lot. But I think what's helpful about the prompt and what's helpful about the exercise is that this draft, uh, it generates a lot of really, really productive questions. Um, if the elderly couple has been sitting in this lobby for six hours, that suggests a lot of patience, both for the couple as well as Piotr. Something inside each of them keeps them here for six plus hours when nobody is trying to help the couple, nobody is trying to help Piotr help the couple. So what is it within each of them that makes them do this? Why are they there? Why do they hang out for all this time? Um, why doesn't someone leave after 20 minutes versus two hours uh, versus four hours? Um, and also, you know, trying to figure out, map out the, not only the motivation, but also the escalation. Something triggers this moment inside of Piotr uh, in which he just loses it at this couple. Um, and he does it in this way that really shames him. But I don't know what that is yet. Um, the fun, I get, like I said before, is that I'm going to be able to figure it out. But here is this fragment that I've carried around for, for months now that I haven't taken anything away from. I've just given more energy to it because now I have something to work with, um, something that helps me ask and answer questions that the story really has to account for in its eventual final form. Uh, for those of you who try this exercise, something that I want to also suggest is a, an add-on exercise by Matt Bell, who has written this really terrific book about revision called Refuse to be Done. Um, in that book, Matt suggests something called writing the islands, quote unquote. And it's an exercise in which you take fragments like this. You take the things that you know about a particular story or a chapter and you simply write the things that you know need to happen, have to happen, that you want to happen. And you don't, for, you don't think about how to lead into them or how to transition into them. You just write these like discrete chunks, these islands. And eventually you have enough of the islands that you begin to see how the story could potentially map out. So you're filling in um, in between the islands once you have enough critical mass of them um, to see the story as a whole. And I have done that a couple of times with a couple of different pieces and really do find that to be um, a helpful, unlinear way, nonlinear way of storytelling that I think suits me as a writer rather than beginning at the beginning. So that is it for today's show. Um, thank you so much for listening. You can find me at www.jungyun.com. www.jungyun.com. The Interloop Radio will be back next week with a new episode. Remember to subscribe so you can get inspired, get focused, and get lit. Thank you so much for listening. I'm Jung Yun for the Interloop Radio.